cannot believe I'm seeing this right now. Part one, we are going to cover where to stay in Fairbanks, Alaska. Pike's Waterfront Lodge is a perfect place to stay in Fairbanks because A, it's affordable and you're going to need to stay as many nights as you can to catch the Aurora Lights on this trip, but also because it totally captures the kitschy and unique Alaska personality that Fairbanks has to offer. This hotel has a lot going on. So for example, there is a sauna in the steam room that you can enter, I believe 24 hours a day. And then on site, when you're outside, you can explore the property, but there's just like a ton of little buildings with different activities and things going on. Um, this is the theater and like pool room library that they have where you can go in. I believe at night they show an Aurora light like film over and over. And then during the day you can hang out in the library. They show, I think like Iditarod races on the screen. Um, and there's also like a pool room in the back. So just in general for the price, I felt like, wow, like there's a lot going on here. And if you have a day at the hotel where you're hanging out, there's just a lot to do and to keep busy with. Location-wise, this hotel also just makes sense. It's located just a few minutes from the airport and right on the edge of town near most of the main things to do within downtown, as well as about a 25 minute drive from Aurora Point, which is the main place that I'm going to recommend that you go each evening to catch the Aurora Lights. Speaking of the Aurora Lights, I loved this little Aurora Discovery room they had on site. I thought this was really cool as well. One last thing to note on this hotel is that they have these cool little cabin rentals on site as well. I didn't stay in one of these, but I did think it was a really cool lodging option. Hi guys, so I'm here at the Fairbanks Ice Sculpture Festival. It is very cold, but I'm very excited to be here, so let's go check it out. The Ice Alaska event runs from February until the end of March. So if your trip doesn't fall during those dates, you might want to skip to the next activity I have um, shown here. But if you are going to be here during these dates, you absolutely have to check this out. It was one of my favorite things that I did on this trip. Admission for this event is about $17 a person, which is so very worth it. It is split into two areas. So the first area of the event is basically a playground made out of ice. So you've got ice slides, ice ping pong, pretty much anything that you can think of. Um, to basically be a kid and play with ice. Once you're done exploring the ice playground, there is a second part to this event, which is the ice sculpting championship. Back in this forest area is where all of the ice sculptors are working on their competition pieces. And it's in this area called the Enchanted Forest. And it is as magical as it sounds. Let me show you. to watch is that each one of these ice sculpture areas there's at least like six people working on different parts of it so one person is molding a hand and the other person is moving a piece and reattaching it sorry I'm holding this mitten because my hands frozen and I need to control my iPhone with the other um, but it is just the amount of like team effort and um, I don't know just like moral support from the teams talking to each other it is a really cool experience and you can tell there's quite the little community out here. Depending on the dates of your stay, I recommend checking out their website and seeing what competitions are happening when because for me, I was able to come while they were sculpting and building these creations. And then I came back a few days later and saw the finished pieces. So it was a really, really amazing experience all around. The next thing that you must do while in Fairbanks is spend an afternoon at Running Reindeer Ranch. This experience costs around $85 to $120 depending on the season and you are able to spend about two to two and a half hours hanging out with these beautiful reindeer and going on a walk in the forest with them. I absolutely loved this experience. It was super unique and we learned so much about these animals. Like, did you know that reindeer get the zoomies just like dogs? These tours book up fast, so make sure that you book this one a few weeks in advance to get your spot. Another iconic Alaskan experience is to go on a dog sled tour during your trip. 
I did this with a company called Trailbreaker Kennels. This is located literally in downtown Fairbanks, maybe like three minutes from the airport. This sled ride was four miles long and on such a beautiful property. It cost about $125 a person, and I think it's a great price for what it is. If you're interested in doing something a little more hands-on, there are plenty of places in Fairbanks where you can do dog mushing, but for what it was, I thought this was a really awesome experience. Next up, we are headed about 15 to 20 minutes from Fairbanks to go to North Pole, Alaska. And yes, you heard that right. And yes, the whole town does take it very seriously. Here you can make a visit to the iconic Santa Claus house where there is a very large Santa Claus and a very large gift shop, but I will say it has some serious character and this is worth a stop. Personally, I am a huge fan of quirky roadside attraction type places, so I loved this spot. I also love Christmas, so I loved going and getting to shop even though it is very much not Christmas anymore. And if you're looking to traumatize your children, you can buy a letter here from Santa himself telling them that they are not so good this year. <laughs> Other things to do here at Santa's house include getting a photo with Santa year round. You can also check out his toy workshop and factory, as well as have a sweet treat from Santa's sweet shop. Otherwise, pretty much just a gift shop, but I did buy an ornament, which I really enjoyed. And also I really enjoy the actual aesthetic of this place. It's very like vintage Christmas, so very cute. And I had a good time here. I also spotted this Antler Academy place on the way out, which looks like some kind of a reindeer experience. It's currently shut, but it might be open by the time you go, so I would look that up as well. Next up, I took an hour and a half drive to Chena Hot Springs Resort, which by the way, this drive in itself is an activity. It is so beautiful and scenic. Anyways, at the resort, they have a hot spring, obviously, and also an ice museum to check out. The hot springs cost about $20 a person to get in. It also costs extra for lockers, so bring change for that. And then it is $5 a person for towels if you need one, so bring one if you can. Swimming in the springs was definitely super enjoyable, especially after being in negative temperatures for multiple days. I really did love this. Just keep in mind that the springs aren't necessarily very big and tend to get really crowded, so something to keep in mind. The other thing to do here at this resort is the Aurora Ice Museum, and I have some complicated thoughts about this. So I feel like it's not really Really a museum. It's more of an ice bar. I think that that is where the value is. It costs about $20 a person to go in and it also costs $20 to get an apple teeny at the ice bar. So I would say only do this if you're planning on do the ice bar. It's a great photo op, but overall I don't know really what else they're going for in here. In the back of the building there's basically just like these Airbnb rooms which are very interesting. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a bar, there's some stuff in the main room, and then there's these rooms that you can look at, which I guess are Airbnb rooms. I don't know if I would stay here, but yeah, this is just my honest opinion. It's really cool. It's just, I don't know, $40 is a lot, so I'm not sure what I thought. Lastly, for my final experience I had that was non-Aurora related, I did a fly drive Arctic Circle tour with Northern Alaska Tours. This tour begins with a scenic flight on a tiny plane from Fairbanks to Coldfit, Alaska, and during that journey, you actually cross the Arctic Circle. Apparently, only 2% of people ever make it north of the Arctic Circle in their lifetime, so this is definitely a big bucket list item to accomplish. After landing in Coldfoot, we stopped at the Coldfoot Camp Cafe, which is basically like a trucker station in the middle of the Arctic tundra. This place has a very interesting history, and the population of the town itself is only 34 people. While in Coldfoot, we also got to make a stop to get an up-close look at the Alaskan pipeline, which was really, really fascinating. Here is where you do not want to make the mistake that I made with this tour. See this because after this stop, we got back on the Dalton Highway and we drove pretty much all day. This is because this was not an overnight tour. This was a tour above the Arctic Circle and then back to Fairbanks all within one day. For me, it was way too much time in transport. Do not do that. Instead, book one of their tours that stays overnight in Coldfoot so that you can see the aurora from there and truly take in the experience before you have to hit the road again. The trip back on the Dalton Highway highway is certainly a unique one and very scenic, but again, not something that you really want to do after just flying in. On a positive note, I did get my photo with the Arctic Circle sign so I can prove I am definitely part of the 2% now. So tonight I'm bringing you along on my third night of chasing the Aurora Lights. I've been coming to this place called Aurora Point, which is give or take around 15 to 20 minutes out of downtown Fairbanks. Um, it's a little farther out of the city on a mountain with less light pollution. And basically you can come up here rather than driving around and kind of like waiting in different viewing points sitting in your car. You can come up to this place. It's basically kind of like a, like a cabin vibe, kind of like a holding room um, with a bunch of tables and chairs. It's really cozy. Uh, there's coffee, like Wi-Fi 
wine, all the things. And you just sit in there and you wait. Um, the guys are super science oriented, so they totally understand the forecast. They kind of walk you through the what the numbers mean and also just like give you a little bit of background information on the Aurora Lights in general. You basically wait and watch. This is my third night coming. And on the first night, we didn't see anything. Um, the second night, actually, so last night, uh, we were not, like the numbers were not looking good. I actually almost didn't come. And then I came up here and started to turn around and basically like right at 2 a.m., which is when they closed. This place is open, by the way, from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. So right before they closed, a lot of people had already left and then all of a sudden, bam, there they were. It was super short lived. I'll put the picture up on the post, but it was incredible and super magical. And luckily last night, this place wasn't very crowded. I will say I've already walked in and it's a bit crowded tonight, but that's okay because we have really good odds of seeing the lights. So I'm gonna bring you guys along for the experience. So let's go.